Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and we are back today for day two with Amina El Kabani. Welcome, Amina. How are you doing today? Thank you, Anna. I'm so good as well. Like, I'm just excited to get back into it. We've got more submissions to edit yes. today. Just to refresh your memory, everyone, we are editing iPhone photos. And today I decided to dedicate the moment to some musician community and have a little fun creating some cover art feeling imagery. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. Awesome. I am super excited. Yesterday was so much fun and I learned a lot from you as did hopefully everyone else. And I just want to give a warm welcome to everyone watching on Behance and YouTube. Thank you for being here with us today and welcome everyone into the chat. I see Sam and Tim and Lisa. Hope you all are doing well today and thank you for being here with us. Um, just a quick reminder, don't forget to start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenge hosted by Jesus Ruiz. Ramirez every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. You can tune in and brush up on those Photoshop skills. And, uh, you know, it's always a good time with him. So check that out. And today I know we have a lot of fun things in store for us. So Amina, I will pop it right over to you. Amazing. Thank you. Well, I think it would be cool to just revisit some of the stuff we did yesterday to provide some context. So we had some really cool submissions and a lot of them were portraits we had some food photography in there and we also even edited a selfie to kind of bring out that sunset and this is sofia guerrero this is some food by Amon benet these are some portraits of skylar and what else did we do we edited this gorgeous photo of some fruit so all of these were shot on iphone by the way which is absolutely mind-blowing to me because of how much we were able to do with them these photos so today we had some submissions that are a little bit different we're gonna go ahead and create some more stylized editing today and so for all of you mu musicians out there i know it's kind of hard sometimes to get access to a dslr especially if you're not regularly using one and sometimes you get super excited and you want to put a song out or you want to create some buzz around your music or really anything this can apply to anything by the way anything that you are excited to share out with the world you always need like some visual assets to create some buzz and and just get people talking really so today we're going to tackle some of those opportunities and i'm going to show you how you can really elevate your iphone photos to feel really good and just feel like you know more stylized as well like you can get so much out of everything that you just carry in your pocket it's insane so today we're going to start with let's see i actually wanted to start with some of my own photos of myself um that my friend nadira photographed of me not too long ago because you know let me just go ahead and use myself as an example i love these photos i feel like if i ever have another song to drop pretty soon maybe I would want to use one of these photos. They make me feel really good and I just want to transform them. So let's see what we can do and bring out from these. Yeah, we I have guess. our panel pulled up here. Sorry, go on ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, just chime in and say how awesome it was to watch you edit these iPhone photos yesterday and learn about how important it is for the tool that you have on you, aka your iPhone. And you did such a wonderful job. And so I, I yeah, I'm just I'm very blown away by what you did with those. Thank you. I blew myself away. I'm re-inspired. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I haven't really like tried that. Sometimes I'll have a moment where I'll airdrop you know, a photo from my phone to my computer because that's where I primarily like to edit photos. So it doesn't feel, you know, like I'm going back and forth between my phone. I spend so much time on my phone already. So at least I can keep some distance away from my screen. But but that was the first time yesterday really editing a full batch of iPhone photos. And I was really impressed by the power that Lightroom has. And I have to say, I've tried a few different editing um, platforms and Lightroom is is the one with the most power so far. So take it from me. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm going to go ahead and just brighten this up. The natural photo is like 
it's pretty nicely balanced, but there are some sunspots and I feel like there's just a lot of different directions I could take this image. So I'm just going to start with seeing what we have there and how far we could push the exposure. Even just like brightening up that much feels a lot more inviting already. And now I feel like I can really just mold this image to be something at least more interesting than it was before. This is already a pretty interesting image. I really love the background. Nadira picked this location in downtown Los Angeles and I was going for like a CEO of my life kind of vibe, <laughs> <laughs> styling wise. So let's see here, what do we want to do? I feel inspired to really push the color palette actually and just Yesterday, I went pretty natural with my edits, but today I feel like we're going to get really weird. Yes. And yeah, I feel like Thursday's call for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already using this color grading tool here, it gives you so many different variations of what's possible. I'm really digging this like warmth here that it, I just brought out with these mid-tones. And if you were watching yesterday, one thing about me is I love warm. <laughs> I pretty much always edit warm, so there's no surprise there. But yeah, it's different for every photo, you know? Every photo does not command the same color treatment. So we're just going to go with the flow. Very chill. I, I was talking yesterday about how this is very, like, therapeutic for me. And if you're watching right now, I would love 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 for you to grab some of your favorite iphone photos and edit alongside me you know see what happens yeah. and at least by the end of this session you should have some really fun edits to share and like be excited about i think that would be awesome and i think also if anyone is editing along with us and have any questions for amina go ahead and pop those into the chat um because i think there are some really cool things that she's doing here today and that she did yesterday. You can always catch that replay um, that are a little bit different than maybe what we're used to. Absolutely. So this is going in a very, very like warm golden hour direction. And what's cool, personally, as a photographer, I love to shoot during golden hour. It's very like easy to make your subject look beautiful and just have like a gorgeous like glow about them but it's not always accessible it's kind of difficult to schedule every single shoot I have during golden hour so that's why Lightroom is so amazing you can actually recreate that feeling and that look through editing which is what I'm doing right now if I had shown you this and told you I photographed it at like 6 30 p.m you might believe me, yeah. <laughs> but it was definitely midday and not golden hour at all. So the crazy. power of editing, the power of editing. Wow. Yeah. Zooming in already. It like feels very silky warm. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we're doing so far. Oh, that my is God. a major difference. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. So the world is yours. It is at your fingertips. I'm going oh. to start editing more on my phone too, because I am on the go so much, especially like when I start to get back into travel. It's I, I love to like, you know, be one of those people who just busts out their laptop whenever I want to edit. But I have to also take my own word and utilize the resources in my pocket. And so if you haven't checked out Lightroom Mobile yet, I recommend to do that because yeah. it's just as powerful. Absolutely. So I'm just adding some of the shadows back in here just to give it some deeper contrast. And, you know, I kind of like it there. That's pretty nice. And if I was to release it as a single or something, I feel like I would call this song, hmm. I don't know, maybe someone in the chat can chime in. I can't think of a single title yet, <laughs> but imagine yeah. what this photo would feel like sonically. I'm trying to figure it out. I know, I'm curious to see what you come up with. 
Right. I'm going to have to maybe follow up like <laughs> on Instagram later once I come up with all of these these ideas. Yeah. That's like not bad at all. Okay. That's cool. We've got a single cover, folks. <laughs> I can totally see this on Spotify. <laughs> right? Oh, my goodness. And that was just with a phone. Insane. So okay. let's try out some of these submissions here. Let's see. These are from Jada Imani in the Bay. She's an incredible, incredible rapper, singer, songwriter. And she submitted a few photos here. This looks like it was maybe on a music video shoot, which is great because, again, maybe you last minute pulled together a team and you couldn't find a photographer or a videographer and you have the tools at your disposal and you decided to shoot something yourself or shoot something with a friend and say, hey, here's my phone, we're going to shoot this. But you still want to create some buzz around whatever your release is. You can do that. You can do that. So let's see what we can do with this. If I were to see this on social media and like wonder about what was going on there, I would definitely, definitely opt into whatever it is they're selling <laughs> I know, <it's laughs> or whatever cool. music they have going on. I know this green screen, they probably made like a really cool video. And what I just did was selected the um, selected the subject with a new layer mask because what I want to try to do is because the green background, yes, it's cool, but it is a green screen. I'm sure they would want to Photoshop something in there. Maybe, maybe they already did. I don't know. But what I'm going to try to do is actually invert this selection so that I can change the background as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and click invert. And now it selected the opposite. So first it selected everyone in this image as the subject. Now I selected the inverse by just going ahead and clicking invert. It looks like some of the selection is just not super, super sharp there either, right over here. So I'm going to just clean that up with a brush with the minus tool here to take away from the mask and I am increasing the size and I'm gonna go ahead and just erase that mask where I don't want it because I don't want the background to change and also their arm to change we want to leave that isolated so doing my best you can do a much cleaner job of that um, if you are spending more time on it, but for teaching purposes, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, lightly clean it up. That looks pretty good to me. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so now we have this mask and I could easily just click back in, which is awesome. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to the color. And let's try like purple at least i want to minimize that like green screen feeling to something a little bit more natural and that kind of went ahead and neutralized it to white as i'm oh one moment folks okay there we go so we're just trying a bunch of things here And let's see how that's looking so far. That went ahead and neutralized it pretty nicely. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely helps a lot. It really does. Let's just take a look for reference. That's already so different. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's that could good. be a really cool promotional behind the scenes. And like you said, you come across it on social media and you're kind of like, oh, what's this? Exactly. Exactly. I want to watch whatever it was that they created. So now it's already a little bit blurry, but I'm just going to go ahead and increase the noise reduction a bit here. Add a little bit more sharpening there. And I'm going to see how far I can push it stylistically. So let's try out some of these shadow adjustments, bring down the whites there. 
That feels really fun. It looks like they had an amazing time on set. It does. I personally love like a monochromatic feeling, but let's see. I'm just toggling these calibration tools to see what happens, intuitively feeling into it. And I want them to glow without feeling too overbearingly warm. That's looking pretty nice. Let's see this hue, saturation, and luminance module here. Hmm, I might want to boost the luminance a bit in the yellows, make it a bit brighter. And oranges, that's a bit too much, but that looks like nice and natural, like a nice natural glow to me. And referencing the original once more. Wow. Major difference. So crazy. It's insane what you can do. And voila, you have a very sweet promotional image for your rollout. I love it. That's really fun. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste that edit. I am just using my trackpad and clicking the command key on my MacBook, if you are a Mac user, and clicking sync just to see how that turns out. I want to see how well this edit transferred. And that's like a pretty nice natural edit. Another really great BTS photo. I can bring it down, I can boost it. So Jada also has, I believe, like a body butter skincare line, which also corresponds with her music. And I just think it's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, she looks gorgeous. That looks so nice. Let's see the before and after on that one. Let's check it out. We just kind of brought back the color that we could be there. Yeah. Could have been there. It it's feels so much very softer natural. And yeah, natural. It looks really nice. I love that. And if I wanted to take it a step further, I could even crop in. iPhone photos, you can't really crop in too crazy without it like making the quality like you know not the best but that actually doesn't look bad that looks pretty good she looks amazing yeah oh so fun so let's tackle some more of these submission photos these are some submission photos that i kind of like curated from the perspective of okay cover art Submit some photos that you could use for cover art, you know? And I love these. This is by Alec Bailey. Or Alec Bailey is in the picture. Um, and yeah, I like this one. It feels challenging because it's indoors at night. And so this gives me an opportunity to really like push the image further and just see how creative we can get with it while making it like more stylistic. And so I know sometimes we we take images that we love the composition, we love like how it feels, but maybe it's not the sharpest. And I don't think that those should be considered like a no go. You know, I think that there's opportunity there to really just see where you can take it and just stylize it in a really creative way. So my first inclination is to just mess with these color grading tools here, these panels, to see what feeling I can really get out of this photo. Color is very, color speaks to you. And so you've just got to kind of ask it like what it's trying to say or what you even want it to say to your audience, what you want it to say about your music or your offering, whatever it is that you are bringing to the world that you're creating these assets for. Yeah. And I already am really liking these colors together. These like pinks and purples. So another thing about me, I'm very detail oriented. Um, something I would highly suggest getting rid of if you have photos like this, the little light switch. 
I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Yeah. And that's okay because we have tools to actually get rid of that. And so I'm going to use this healing tool or clone tool and I'm just going to clone stamp it out because we're going to get it out of there. Just that easy. And what I did there, I literally just clicked it. It went ahead and smart selected a part of the image that has similar attributes and cloned it for me. So I didn't even have to really think about it too much. And bam, it's already cleaned up the image so much just by that. I know that helps so much and and just gives it's like a simple little thing and it gives the image a, a better feel. It really elevates it. It's yeah. it's wild, you know, retouching. It doesn't have to be scary. I used to be so intimidated, but it turns out the clone stamp is actually my best friend. <laughs> Wow. I totally agree. This is feeling pretty good. I'm going yeah. to go ahead and just take away some of this texture too to give mm -hmm. it that like soft, dreamy feeling. It's super cool because uh, a picture like this, you wouldn't really look at it and think, oh, I could turn this into something cool, a piece of art, an album cover. And um, and I, I think it's awesome that you're giving us a new way of seeing these photos and looking at them in a different light and uh i even took some of my own photos last night and was just playing around with them and it was it was fun because stuff that i would be like nah this is just a quick snapshot this is not worth my time editing and it it gave it like a whole new meaning i'm so glad to hear that it it really yeah it invites us into looking at the way we're engaging in our environment differently and like spend some more time with those images that we're taking throughout the day, throughout the years, you know, that just kind of sit in our phones and we can, we can continue to like breathe life into them and, you know, Definitely. extend their lifespan yeah. by doing things like this. And, and it also like, I think I talked about this yesterday. It really secures those memories in our mind. It like, helps us be specific on memory i feel like there should be a study about how this might increase like memory retention or something so yeah, if anyone knows a scientist <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool i would be so interested in seeing that study let's check out our progress so far oh my That's god crazy Yeah, that's, I wouldn't have thought either, but this is like, I love the composition. Like, uh, I think I spoke about this yesterday as well, how I have such a painter mind and like from that comes like, my eye is just so focused on composition a lot of the time and like el different elements that you can find in images. Like, I love this glow, I love this flower. And even these textures here on the on the right and this like circle on the left, like this composition feels really good to me. Yeah. And it it's really cool, cool to explore what is possible there. Yeah. I hope, I Alec, if you're watching this, I hope you're excited and I hope this brings you joy and maybe you will use this as a single cover art. I so totally we've brought can. out a really fun feeling. And now let's let's see how many different like color palettes we can get out of this. I'm going to have to go back and export all of these versions later. But in case you didn't know, if you ever are like working in Lightroom like this and you want to just continue editing, but you already have like an edit you like, it's great in the way that it does. It's non-destructive editing. And so you can always go back to a previous version over here on the left in your history. And as I'm scrolling over here, I see all of the various edits I've done throughout this entire work session. And if I missed one that I like, I can I can just click on it and it'll bring it back just like that. So just another little Easter egg for you. Um, let's see, maybe I'll just bring it more green. Let's see if we can if it'll feel differently, if it's green. And it does. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
it's like therapy for your mind it's just crazy so if this was to be a cover i would go ahead and crop it to the one by one option to make sure it's even i would make sure that everything that i want in frame is where i want it and this one's hard because you have a couple of different options and Another composition trick I'd like to share is the rule of thirds, which is what you're seeing here in this crop. At any of these like tic-tac-toe points, that can be considered a focal point. So when you are looking at an image, you're going to either look at one of these four points or right in the center most often. And so you want to kind of make sure that you are leading the eye in a way that keeps the viewer engaged and it's it's intentional too. You have to think about, okay, where do I want the viewer to look right away? And luckily here, this composition is arranged so that both this flower and the subject Alec is both in these focal points here. And right in the center is pretty, it's it's kind of like a, a viewer loop here. So that's that's another little trick that I learned over the years. That's super cool. I would consider that pretty done, but for good measure, a little blue never hurt anyone. As you can see, there's so many different versions you can create in such a short time. If you are like a graphic designer or someone like that, you can push your images really far. You can probably export multiple options for your client or for yourself, you know, make as many options as you like and you can pick one your favorite one later. Oh, so I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. It Alec, I will really send cool. this to you later. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. What do we think, chat? Are we liking what we're seeing? I'm having an issue loading the chat right now. I'm not sure if it's on my end. Uh oh. Let's go but... ahead and see. Well, that's all right. I will let you know once I, oh, here we go. It's like it is up. So we yeah. had quite a few submissions. I see the chat actually. Everyone says super different vibe for sure. Thank you, Sam. Steve said Hall of Fame and Rock and Roll Museum. Ganesh says I'm a graphics designer. Awesome. So we've got a lot of different artists in here. That's great. I hope that this is inspiring for you. Yeah. So this is a sunset photo. I love a sunset photo because I feel like sometimes they can be the most difficult to edit. But as cliche as they can be, I think that you can always find beauty in the sunset. And I will never get tired of seeing different sunset images <laughs> i know it's the best so let's see here anytime i'm editing a sunset image the key or the secret is to just bring down all of the whites and the highlights because typically your phone is going to blow it out naturally unless you like are clicking it and adjusting the exposure in real time but even then, it sometimes doesn't get it right. So to balance it out, I will bring down the highlights, the whites, and see if I like more or less contrast, if I like more or less exposure. I feel like this would be the cover to like an ambient like album or something. So let's play off of that idea. If this was an ambient music album cover, it might look a little something like that. Mm. But let's push the colors even more. I'm into that. Yeah. That, that feels cool. very peaceful. <laughs> That could definitely be for like some chill vibe Spotify playlist or something like a, a work zone. <laughs> exactly. One of those lo-fi hip hop, like yes. five hour 
offerings. Yes. <laughs> those are the best. I really love those. I love to zone in on some like binaural beats and solfeggio frequencies and like lo-fi beats. They really totally. help me focus. Yeah. Anyone else in the chat? I still think the chat is down. It doesn't look like there's anything happening, um, but uh, hopefully we'll have some people chiming in. Um, but I would say I am for sure on the same page as you with that. Um, I haven't listened to music in a while when I've been working and I don't know why. I think just maybe because it's summer and there's like birds calling outside and that's always super nice. But um, I mean, it, it's really cool because I think it will influence what you're working on too. Exactly. Yeah. I try to curate like whatever I'm listening to, to match the vibe of what I'm trying to achieve with my editing, just to keep myself like in that zone. Totally. Wow. There's so many things you can do. That's very different. Yeah. Super different. I might even crop in a bit more. Yeah, that yeah, feels like that. really fun. We're going to add more of a pink tint there. That's a bit too much for me. I'm going to bring back some of the exposure. That's very soft and pretty. I like that a lot. And if you wanted to, you could actually maybe even create two exports with an image like this. You can create a few different crops on both of the sides. So allegedly you could have this be like an A side or like a B side and then mm. create another crop from the same image so that you have kind of like a cohesive batch. And voila, you've got a rollout. Love it. So much fun. Yeah, those colors are really, really nice. So let's switch it up a little bit. I'm going to actually show you some cover art I made for a friend of mine. And this was actually a full-blown painting. I created a digital collage and then I painted it and then I further iterated on it in Lightroom. And so this is what that process would be like. This is something I learned in high school when I was taking art classes. My teacher was very good at like taking a, a photo of a painting to digitize it and then just really bring out all of the good stuff in there to archive it you know for later purposes and so what you want to do if you are, are like a, a paint artist or um, you make sketches and you want to keep digitizing your pieces in case you ever lose them or if you sell them or like in my case I gave the physical piece away to the artist that commissioned me and but I wanted to have an archive for later as well so what you want to do is you want to position that piece of art somewhere well lit evenly lit and then just make sure that nothing is too blown out. And then once you have that image, you can import it into Lightroom. You can crop it accordingly. And then you can bring out what you see in your mind. Like this for me, didn't necessarily feel super complete. Even after I completed the painting, I, I felt called to continue to iterate on it. And so what I did was I just made it really pop. I started, whoa. That's too bright. Um, I just started messing around in this adjustment panel and seeing what colors I wanted to bring out, what I wanted to pop, what I wanted to kind of blend more. And so what I'm doing now is I'm bringing the highlights down once more and the whites kind of flattening the image and giving all of the colors like a fair chance to pop out. Yeah. And let's see. I'm going to go down to my calibration module and just see what colors I can, what feels best. Like there's, obviously I used a very specific color palette to paint with, but there's always room for a little bit of a switch up, even when you have an established color palette. So I am bringing the blues to be a bit more aquamarine. And I know I told all of you yesterday that staying within a few tick marks within this calibration tool is where you want to stay. But 
you can break the rules when you're doing something more creative and you're just like allowing yourself to flow and explore. I think that there's a lot of room for exploration when it comes to abstract work like this. Definitely. And that calibration panel is so powerful too. I, it really changes those colors so dramatically and makes a big difference in whether it's your painting like this or a photo. I think it's sometimes even more powerful than um, hue and saturation. I agree. I think it pushes them in a really nice direction. So my favorite thing to do is reduce the noise, just create an overall like soft feeling throughout the image, add a bit more sharpening there. And as you can see, it's already feeling like a bit more united. I wonder here, there are a lot of purples in this photo, but I feel like they're getting a little lost in the image. And so I'm going to see how I can bring those back in. Maybe with the saturation tool here. That did something. Yeah. And we're back in the hue module. Yeah. Let's check out the luminance as well. Hmm. So let's see. Let's take a peek at the before and after so far. Wow. That's really fun. Oh my God, that's incredible. <laughs> it's it's like, so funny because it's like you start to get used to it. You don't notice anything else is changing really that much. And then you look at the before and after and it's like mind blowing. It really is so trippy what's possible. Like I, I love this already and it feels like it's getting closer to the direction of how I see in my mind. Yeah. Hmm. That's Ooh. very trippy. Okay. <laughs> Took a little too far. Too blue. But right about there is kind of where I want it. I do want it a bit warmer and a bit more pink. I like the oranges a lot. Trying to find a nice little balance there. I think maybe the blues. This was a uh, oil pastel and acrylic paint. And so some of those textures and colors are not doing what I want them to do, but that's why we're just going to continue flowing with it and seeing. And sometimes you don't know when you're done until it's like a feeling in your body where you're like, okay, yeah, that feels complete. So don't overthink that either. You know, sometimes yeah. it takes longer than others. Sometimes it takes me five hours to edit one image because I just can't decide or like land on a feeling of completion. <laughs> Sometimes totally three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's feeling a little bit more, yeah, like I said, united. And let's zoom in and just check out some of those colors. Overall, I like it. I think I would also just create, take away some of the texture. Well, that's maybe somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, because it's like you want the texture there, but also it feels softer on the eyes if it's like a bit more smooth. Yeah. I, want it, I wanted it to be like a Rorschach image of people on a dance floor. Is anyone picking that up? Let me know. <laughs> Ooh, that's super cool. Yeah. That was that was a few years ago, but I always love when people ask me to kind of like merge all of the different ways I like to express myself, mm. especially for a commission. Just really fun. Yeah. Let's yeah, do that, this that for... would be such a cool job. Yeah, I'm like, please. Ask me to make more art. <laughs> um, so art actually runs in my family. And when I went to Egypt 
in 2019, I had the opportunity to check out some of the art of my family over there. Mm. And my uncle is super talented. I hope he has his own gallery one day. My uncle Rafat. And I just took these photos because I wanted to archive them for him because he just had them in this in this notebook. And the lighting wasn't great in there, but I wanna show you, even if you don't have the correct lighting situation, you can do the same thing to archive your work. You can just go ahead and crop in and, you know, do do your best with whatever lighting situation you have. But I do always recommend like using, um, yeah, natural light, even natural light, especially if you can get outside and like get that natural, well, not not like direct sunlight, but indirect sunlight, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And so these colors were also really beautiful. These are, this is a acrylic paint, I believe that he used. And yeah, these symbols, I believe this is, these are like dancing, like Arabic letters. They, they're so beautiful to me. And I just it wanted to a see. Gorgeous piece. It's so pretty, like how we can make it shine even more. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a lot more contrast in there. And that way, if he ever, you know, wanted to submit for a grant or or create a website for himself, even he could digitize these really nicely. And I recommend that any artist do this for yourself. It's like such a nice investment, such a nice way to display your art. Who knows? You might want to submit to art fairs later down the line. So having digitized versions of your physical pieces is an amazing investment now because this is not my own artwork and i don't want to push it too too far i'm going to leave it like that but i just wanted to give you an example of how you can make your art shine and really like digitize it and immortalize it in a beautiful way and very easily as well you know this is just a little bit more enhanced than the original photo but this is definitely what it looked like when i was holding it in my hands and mm -hmm. so now i'll remember that forever yeah so does a lot of your family are they painters or all types of different art yeah yeah um his daughter as well amira is a great painter and uh i have some aunts and uncles who are like art teachers in the university over there Wow, um, that is graphic awesome. designers. Yeah, I really was like super impressed <laughs> seeing yeah. their work, and I it felt very um, affirming in my practice because mm. if I come from a family of artists, that that makes sense. You know, I'm not yeah. like a black sheep or something. Absolutely, I come from a family as artists of artists as well, so I 100% know the feeling. It's like it's really nice to know that that's in your blood. It's so nice to know. I hope that if I do have kids one day, that they also love to make art because yeah. that will make my life a lot more fun. That would <laughs> and be if so they don't, cool. that's okay too. <laughs> wow. So this is a photo of Louis Elser. She makes really cool like synth pop music and she just performed not too long ago in San Francisco. So this is an iPhone photo of her performance. And mm. this happens a lot, right? When you are an artist, a performer, you may or may not have access to the photography that was taken of you, unfortunately, sometimes at venues or festivals. Everyone kind of has their own in-house photographer. And sometimes they're the news outlet. Sometimes you can actually reach out to the person and ask, hey, can I use these images? But it's always good to have your own photos like of your concerts and this and that. And sometimes that means just giving your phone to a friend in the front row so that they can snap some photos for you. So in that scenario, this is what we're going to be editing and we're going to just make it feel like how her music feels and see how far we can push it. What do you think your favorite subject to edit is? Mm, my favorite subject to edit. I love, I do love actually editing live music photography, mm. but I do love portraits as well. Like 
I think that portraits, they're new and unique every time. And they just really allow you to connect with the subject. And you are, yeah, it's just very like connective for me. And I'm a very yeah. connective person, but I feel connected to any anything that I'm editing really. I can really just zone in and and feel like called to certain energies in an image. But nature as well, it, it's it's always like really nice to photograph travel photos and mm. I mean edit travel photos or nature photos just to remind myself to like get out of the house and yeah <laughs> ironically it's like I'm I'm at home editing photos of nature <laughs> but <laughs> I know the feeling yeah it will inspire me to get out there more yeah I really love your travel photos I think they have so much life to them and the way you edited them with the colors that you talked about today and yesterday and then also just the way you kind of see the world is really inspiring thank you so much i can say the same about you i discovered oh. some of your travel <laughs> photography and i was shook oh thank you <laughs> so fun it looks like you had just have the most fun and i love that you are like doing all of these activities traveling and just like living yeah, I love to see people really like living a rich life. Totally. I couldn't agree more. Like it, it's just so incredible to do. And uh, my husband and I both quit our nine to five jobs and bought a van and started traveling. And it was the best decision we ever could have made. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> I love you. that. I'm actually so inspired because I would love to do that eventually. You, How long have you been doing sure. that? Um, since 2019 and we actually were living in LA as well and met in LA and we were like we need to get out of here we need to see the country and we rented a van for our honeymoon and then um, just fell in love with it and had so much fun we're like let's do this full time so then yeah we were on the road for two years and then bought a house so that we could have a studio space to work in um, while also still traveling part-time now wow yeah it's been incredible highly recommend everyone including yourself to do it <laughs> what's your do you have a favorite place that you've seen so far it's so hard van? <laughs> so many people ask that question um i would say a few of my favorite places in the u.s um i absolutely loved olympic national park it was stunning um i love glacier um, I love the Southwest. I love Maine. It's so hard. <laughs> so wow. many amazing spots. That's so cool. I bet you've probably seen some of the best sunsets like in the oh, world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And most of them, I have no photos to prove. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yep. So what I'm doing to this photo here, I just wanted to create that feeling. Louis' music is very like, I wouldn't say heavy bass, but it does have like a certain bounce to it. And for some reason, I just think of like this warmth about Louis. I know warmth. We're going to be so tired of warmth <laughs> by the end of this. But when I go too cool, it's like it doesn't hit the same for me. And so yeah. when I bring it over here, it just feels like like I'm there as well where that's how I imagine it to feel. I like love, yeah, that, that feels good. And I know that this was at SF Pride. So I think that's so cool. She was able to take that stage and just do her thing. Yeah, that's a fun yeah. one. Yeah, and now cool. if she wanted to like promote a show in the future, she could put some text up here at the top in this like blue space like louis oh sir at this venue you know so i try to think about things like that when i'm editing as well or curating photos yeah these are some submissions by camilla covington i really like these i love coffee and caffeine and matcha and mm -hmm. camilla is a singer songwriter and also a latte artist 
Look how beautiful that is. That's so wow. pretty. <laughs> she has a really cool song called Coffee. And she is also like does really fun collages. And so I'm excited that she submitted this because if she does choose to use it later, I am super intrigued to see what she does. So yeah. yeah, let's let's give it our best shot. Let's create like a very fun, hyper caffeinated image. <laughs> Yes. So when I think about matcha and how it makes me feel, I think fresh. I think like mint matcha. There's this place I go to that has the most delicious mint matcha. Mm. And it's just so refreshing. And so I love the color green. This is like actually my favorite shade of green. I think I would call that like chartreuse. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's play off of that. I feel like this is asking for actually a pretty cool, crisp, refreshing, like, edit. And so I boosted the exposure by a lot. Eh, not too much, actually. I brought down the highlights and the whites once more. And I don't want to wash out her skin. So I'm going to keep it pretty like mid-toned. But it did create a lot of nice contrast when I brought down the shadows. And let's see if I want to bring down more white, more of the black point as well. And so I'm going to crop this as if it was a cover. Now again, if we're thinking about composition and leading lines or where where things are in the image and where we would want them. Where do we want to draw the eye in? The latte art looks like a center point. And so we can either have it be the focal point on any of these corner, these four corners of this tic-tac-toe board, or we could have it very centered. And I kind of actually like the centered composition. I like that too. Now, if I wanted to like, create some shadow for this what looks like it might have been the garbage can because I do like the shape that it makes right there I think that this is like a very well balanced composition and it's really fun so what I would do for that is I would just mask it up with the brush tool and bring down the exposure and so let's see how we want that to look so yeah, if I just go around and like messily mask this out to make it darker and then I just adjust, remove some of the mask for where I bled over onto her hand, I can decrease the size, maybe decrease some of the feather so it's a bit more succinct when I am adjusting this mask. As you can see, I am removing the mask from her hand so it doesn't cross over. And yeah, I'm going to click back into the original mask and I'm going to bring down the exposure. Kind of a messy job, but it, it did what I needed it to do. Yeah, yeah. And you could definitely take time to touch that up and get exactly. it perfect. Um, exactly. A couple questions mm -hmm. for you from the chat and yes. looks like we're back up and running now. Um, someone asked, what are your thoughts on film photography? I love film photography. I think that obviously it's the original and it's it's creates such an essence of that moment. And I'm glad you asked because I think we actually do have some film photo submissions, which I will make an exception for because they're really fun. And I think that it's also cool to show you that if you do need to adjust your film photo, I know that there's some controversy around editing fil your film photography, but I think that if you, if you need to, why not? And especially if you are like taking creative license in your, in your edits, or if you are creating something like cover art, you can totally like, push the envelope and see how far you can take it but I personally really love just carrying around a disposable camera mm. just for those moments in case I see like a cool 
composition or something or if I want to capture like a memory with friends and family or my cat whatever it is I like to really just have something on me at all times I'm also like a huge Polaroid fan I love to shoot Polaroids I have probably have like 500 Polaroids that I need to scan <laughs> uh, and import the in they're the best and so it's like yeah film I think it's a great idea to experiment if you're new to photography and to really understand you know aperture and whatnot you can really learn through that and you will really learn how to navigate like lighting you will have a new perspective on, on light in the world and a new appreciation for it and if you have the chance to like learn how to develop your own um negatives highly recommend to do so i haven't had a chance to yet but it's definitely on my to-do list mm. yeah um, and then a chat or a question from <laughs> from YouTube. Um, can you explain file management and maybe specifically your file management? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, yes. So I actually arrange my files by month and year and by like my personal work and my freelance work since I am mm. a freelance photographer. So I have two folders, personal and my work folder. Um, and so my personal stuff, that's all my lifestyle fo photography, all of like my personal film photos, even some of my personal projects. And then I have a separate folder for any commissions I have. And both of them are categorized by year and then month and then whatever that shoot was. So it's August. My month would say August 2022. And I always try to make sure it's searchable too. That way I know, okay, if I did a shoot for, or if I am exporting these photos, I would say, oh, Adobe 2022. And I do put the year as well in the project like folder. Um, so everything is within, so imagine, okay, Adobe 2022 would be in the August 22, 2022 folder. And that would be in the overall arching 2022 folder, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Yeah. yeah. But that keeps it easy to organize chronologically. And then even if this has, say I categorized the raw photos or the untouched photos from this batch. And before I even imported them into Lightroom, it would say Adobe Live 2022. I think it says Adobe part two, the actual folder I have imported. And so when I export these photos, I would create a subfolder within the project folder that would say Adobe 2022 done. That way I know that those photos have been edited already and mm. they would be easily findable within my original project folder. So that's how I do it. <laughs> that's super helpful. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. Yeah, my pleasure. I hope that's helpful. Maybe one of these days I'm going to have to like do a tutorial because once I figured out that that was the best, you know, course of action, I saved myself a lot of trouble. I was very like blase when I first started out and I just had loose photos everywhere and I would label them funny names and yep. <laughs> it would make it really hard for myself. So. I know that's still how I am sometimes with some of my files. I'm like, you would have thought I would have learned by now. And I do have a good folder structure, but there are still things that are named the most random things floating around my desktop. <laughs> Same. Sometimes if I like just import a photo, like one off, I'll just lazily export it. But yeah, <sighs> you know, we've got to. We've got to be more mindful if we want to find them later. <laughs> I know. How is your um, your image organizing process? Um, it's very much the same as what you explained, kind of using the year, the um, the month, and then based on like the job or the place that we were visiting. Awesome. So I'm glad that I'm on the right track with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then and then usually within the job, it will be like photo, video, uh, edits. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. great. 
Yeah. To everyone in the chat, definitely get ahead of that before you start losing track of all of your edits. Absolutely. That is such an important thing to do. A hundred percent. That is my catchphrase for Adobe Live this time. One hundred percent. I know. I find that I say it too much. It's just like such a great thing to say. It just makes sense to me. Like that just feels like such an affirmation. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up this image here, but I really like how it turned out. It looks like one of those like early Instagram, like coffee culture images. And I have such like a fondness in my heart for that moment in time because I my Instagram name used to be the caffeinist. Mm. <laughs> I was like about it. And so this was like a nice little homage to that moment in time. But Camilla, if you're watching this, I hope you like this photo. Yeah, it looks so good. So fun. Let's go back to the front here. My friend James the Third submitted these photos and I think that they're really great. So we're going to edit these. And I think it's a fun like take on, you know, a lifestyle photo that can also be used as cover art or, you know, edited to be like moody. Yeah. I really love like the deadpan look. It feels like I'm about to like hear like a really dope beat come in. Like yeah totally also everyone in the chat feel free to count the amount of times i say like <laughs> oh no actually don't do that because they'll catch me as well <laughs> oh, i think about the fact that i am such a california girl and it is just a part of my everyday vocabulary and i don't know if there's anything i can do about it at this point but it's really, really hard, really hard to try to get rid of those filler words. It is. I think that they have such an energy, though. I'm not exactly mad at it. I just think it's funny sometimes. <laughs> I know, especially if you ever see a transcript of something that you've uh, recorded. That's when it's really bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, this is terrible. Oh, I'm going to challenge myself <laughs> for the rest of the stream <laughs> to minimize my usage of the word like. Yeah, I'll, I'll challenge myself too. It's going to be a game. That looks okay. really cool. We've got some moody vibes going here i'm feeling very called to this like sunsetty palette lately i guess just like very soft lavender to like peach that feels nice yeah fits the summer vibes yeah we didn't do anything too crazy either we just kind of flattened like some of the highlights we made it feel a bit moodier i'm gonna bring back some of those highlights actually and see yeah i prefer it without all the highlight and i think that is a style preference personally but see everyone's discretion you know to each their own I'm so intrigued. One of my favorite things to do when I do these sessions or when I do my own as well is to provide the audience members with my photos to edit mm. on their own. And I would love to do that soon. That would be really cool. Imagine all the ways that people would interpret an image and like take it to a different yeah. direction. Yeah, I used to love doing that, like back in the early days of Instagram and when people would do, oh, what were they called? The the uh, FFA contest, like the free for all. Yeah. Um, and everyone could just take a whole bunch of photos and then edit them however they want. And it was so fun. 
It was so fun. I loved early Instagram days. I feel like so many people were engaged in in the art of photography itself, which people still are, but it was a special moment. Yeah, I know. I miss it. Rip. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste what I did here. I just created a very like moody, warm edit here. And we're going to sync all of these photos with the same edit. That way they just have like a cohesive feeling together. I really enjoy how those turned out. Thank yeah, you for submitting really those, good. James. Cool. What should we do next? I don't know. Let's take a look at what you have. So we have some more submissions here of it looks like beach energy. We've got some tooth gems from Louie. <laughs> We've got a river. We've got some more outside stuff. Alex submitted this photo of himself wearing a lamp, which is his like thing right now. I love that. That's cool. It's it's actually really fun. Let's do this one. Why not? Cool. So his music is under Akari Sage and Akari actually means I think beam of light. And so the lampshade is like a play on, you know, his music name. That's perfect. I think it's so fun. He also submitted this really fun one. Where did it go? I personally love these iPhone selfie, like surrealist selfies. I know. I think they're really cool. Really cool. It, <laughs> it would be awesome to see a book put together of surrealist selfies. Hmm. <laughs> There's an idea for you. You know what? I think you're on to something. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'll get commission on the sales. <laughs> yes, 100%. You've got whatever percentage you want. <laughs> so I'm feeling called to try out some of these presets on the left just to scroll over and see what feeling emerges. And these, I believe, are just the presets that come when you download Lightroom. And so all of you should have access to this as well if you have Lightroom Classic. And they have these different categories of like food, concerts, landscape, but they all bring something really fun to the table. Lifestyle, travel urban architecture okay mm. interesting interesting i'm feeling like a monochromatic look that's nice so let's start there you can always start with a preset and just iterate upon it which is the cool thing about lightroom as well hmm Is there anything you're really excited to edit, Anna, like in general right now? Do you have anything you're working on? Um, I actually have a bunch of different ideas that are coming up out of nowhere. I kind of had something sparking last night. And so I'm starting to gather images together. And I was working on that this morning and, and um, just trying to come up with some new creations and work on some things that have been in my mind for a while. And so I'm super excited to get into that. And I can like, I'm, I've been getting frustrated because I can see exactly what I want in my mind and I can't find the photos to do it. And I really want to get better at illustrating so that I can bring everything together for exactly what I'm seeing when I close my eyes. That's beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Like, I love your style of compositing. And I think it's so cool that you are really good at sourcing images that fit what's in your mind. 
Thank you. Yeah, I think that's the hardest part. Like if I could just put everything into Photoshop exactly as I see it, get Adobe Sensei to understand what I'm thinking. <laughs> right. Then we would be set because that finding the images hardest, hardest thing. It is. It really is. I I treat it like a scavenger hunt. I like to shoot a lot of my own images that I use to composite, but I composite more in a like streams of consciousness kind of exploration, but I haven't challenged myself to have an image in my mind really, and then bring it forward. It's always like, let's see what emerges, but. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's really tough. <laughs> and I remember they showed something at Adobe Max and I don't know if this exists or ever came about, but you could draw out what you wanted to find on Adobe stock and then it would search based on the drawing. Technology. I is know. Wild. I remember That's for the amazing. demo, I think she did like a uh, girl and drew like a little box or something to represent and wrote girl in it and then dog and then I think like grass or something and Adobe stock found that layout exactly. It was so cool. And I'm like, okay, now I need this angle with this sun ray, with the sun rays coming this way. I need this coloring. <laughs> oh my goodness. We are in the future. I know. I know. That's really cool. Yeah. So I haven't, haven't been able to find stuff that way yet, but if anyone knows how, let me know. Yeah, please. Me too. I think that <laughs> that's so exciting to see where technology is going and the fact that adobe is like consistently keeping up with all of the rapidly changing advancements in yeah. technology such a such a leader in the industry i know i wish there was like a ticker on adobe stock that would tell me how many hours i've spent on there <laughs> oh my goodness yeah it's, it has to be like so, so many. And and a lot of times, like, again, that's what takes the longest time. Someone says, how long does a composite take you? Well, including the image searching time. <laughs> yeah, it's the image sourcing that takes the most of time for sure. And then it's like bringing it all together. I'm sure it it's pretty detailed but also yeah it's it's about finding those those perfect images for what it is that you see yeah that takes so long yeah and i mean it used to be that the longest part was cutting everything out and i remember the days of photoshop where you'd sit there with the pen tool or the lasso and you're like going slowly around everything and now just click subject done <laughs> right it's insane i remember being in high school and oh i was the yearbook editor one year and our yearbook cover we decided for some reason to cut out like students in photoshop and like put them on the yearbook cover like very very small yeah. and we had to hand like lasso tool every single one. Oh man <laughs> i do not so miss funny. those days <laughs> It did not, it was not like, I'm just so jealous of the people starting out right now who yeah. will never know those days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, look at the advances in Lightroom too, being able to select your subject and make color grading changes directly so simply and then being able to invert that mask, yeah, copy and invert it. And so you can do the, the opposite to the background. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Uh, it makes it. I love that these advancements, though, allow us to be so much more creative because we don't have to focus too much on those nitty gritty things anymore. Exactly. And I think that's what holds so many people up and including myself sometimes when i get bogged down in technical details is you can't end up creating what you see in your mind because you're stopped by technology or tools that don't work right and i think like so many advances have been made with adobe programs to be able to help us with that and even 
the stuff that you're showing us this week of how to make these very beautiful, very simple edits that people see in their mind that represent a memory, we're no longer kind of just stuck in our heads in a feedback loop. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. It's like, bring it to life, like show yourself what you're seeing in your head and, and solidify that memory there. Yeah. So what I've been trying to do is just see if I can create that lampshade effect, which I did a little bit, but not in the way that I would want to. And I will have to explore that later. But this is feeling like kind of moody. Like he's like the light in a dark room, which we can we can actually explore further there. And what I would do for that is I would just continue to create another um, mask with the linear gradient tool. I would kind of just darken the area around him and then another mask on the other side. And there's so many different ways to achieve this result, by the way. This is just the one that I find the most easy for me when I'm trying to like achieve a certain effect, which this is working out. Um, so I might go back and I would brighten that back. Maybe I would create one more linear gradient from the bottom up and bring the exposure down. Sometimes when I want to isolate a couple different aspects of an image, I'll just kind of darken the rest and that does a pretty good job for me. And then if this were cover art, again, we're going to go to the one by one standard here. And we're just going to go ahead and center that iPhone because it looks like, you know, that's where it should be. What would this song be called? <laughs> mm, good question. But that feels like it could totally be something. And then if I wanted to get a little bit more abstract or creative, I could create another mask, use the brush and kind of just like messily go over it. And let's see. This is just purely experimental, but I'm curious to see if it'll create some sort of like colorful effect here. It's not doing exactly what I want, but creating some more variation in color feels like what I want it to do. So that's mm. nice. And then if I wanted to maybe just see there, that's too bright. Yeah, this is like more of a subtle one. I feel like I would want to maybe even add some grain. And scroll down, add some grain. Too much grain. I'll leave it with no grain. But that feels like maybe it would be called like, you know, it reminds me of Death Cab for Cutie, actually. Mm, totally. Yeah. What's that one song? I don't know. <laughs> Do we have any Death Cab for Cutie fans out there? Let me know. Definitely but yeah. right here. Yes, they were actually like my second concert ever. I think they... All right. Yeah, they were one of my early ones as well. I've seen them a couple times now, but... So cool. This looks like a Polaroid to mm. me. This is my friend Nachi. Thank you for submitting this, Nachi. And yeah, I wanted to also show all of you if you ever wanted to adjust your film photos. Again, I know it's a little bit controversial sometimes for folks who like to keep it pure or like honor whatever the film camera did. But for this purpose, we're just going to go ahead and see what happens when we edit a film photo in Lightroom. So we're going to go to the top. Nachi Official. She's got a really amazing song called Fresh New Gold that literally lives in my head rent free. Mm, I have to check that out. Fresh I can New hear Gold. It. Fresh New Gold. Okay, so we just bumped up the exposure a little bit. We're going to bring down the highlights so we can see everything in the background. 
as well as the whites and it just gives it this nice like vintage feeling and let's go ahead and play with some of these colors give it a nice little green tint some shadow this all of the sudden feels like somebody's like auntie 50 years ago yeah yeah i really like that 50 years ago but in the future <laughs> <laughs> i love thinking about things like that like how are people going to look back on the photos we're taking now and thinking about how what we're doing now is going to be considered vintage in the future like mm. it's trippy i know so this that's that's really fun edit actually i love that it's definitely giving fresh new gold yes so i really like this treatment if i were to crop it in compositionally we would do something like that i think again thinking about those rule of thirds and it looks like the leading lines would be right here on the sunglasses on the arm and it kind of does create that loop of like where your eye is being led so either something like that or even up here and leaving more negative space in case you wanted to add text at the top so let's do that and then just for good measure, we're going to show how much versatility these presets have. Just by scrolling over them, you have so many options for direction. Sometimes with images like this, especially the ones that just feel super timeless, it's really hard to pick a final edit. I know. We've got some cinematic styles. Let's see what that's looking like. I like that a lot. Wow. Futuristic. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Ooh, these cool. look great. Wow. She's just glowing. I know. That feels really nice. Like, I could totally see this as a cover for her new single. Yeah, I really like the crisp, clean look, too. That's mm -hmm. super fun. Yeah. Wow. And this is how you get lost for hours editing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's leave it there for now. That's a nice one. So let's see. This is a submission from another friend, Casey Cope. Rapper in Oakland, California. And I really like this image. It feels like serene. Like you're with the homies. You're just posted up. It's a summer day. So we're going to give it that real summer day treatment. Okay. Yeah. I, for some reason, want to start with the calibration tool just to get a feel for where I want to take it. Sometimes I like to switch it up. There's no right or wrong way to go about this, folks. Don't overthink your process. Just do what feels good. And eventually, you will come out with something that you like. Yes, I could not agree more. When I first started editing in Lightroom, I was very, very, very overwhelmed by all of these panels. And it really just turned out that I needed to just spend more time with them and just see what they had, you know, in store, <laughs> what they could be capable of. 
Yeah, I think the amazing thing with Lightroom is it's a very easy program, but also a very complex program, depending on how much you want to do with it. And you can always learn something and always improve. But I I think it's a little user more user friendly sometimes in Photoshop for anyone to get in there and start experimenting with their photos and editing and, and not have to feel too intimidated by it. Absolutely. Yeah, just just go ahead and start for anyone who's watching this who has an idea or a vision or a dream like I think the best advice that I can give you is just to go for whatever it is that you are wanting to try sometime, you know, it's really just about the act of doing and the act of starting that creates that momentum for you. And it's it's a question of if not now, then when. Right. You know, a hundred percent. So we're getting this to a really nice place so far and it's feeling a bit moodier. We're going to play in this color grading tool over here now. And this is all of a sudden feeling like, uh, it looks like I dug this photo up, like in my grandpa's drawer of memories. I love that. Do you ever do that? You go to your parents or your grandparents' house and you're like asking for all of their old Polaroids and film photos and trying to imagine what those moments were like? Yeah. Yeah. We have so many old photos and I found a ton of photo albums with really old black and white, like original early days of photography from my great 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 grandparents i don't wow. know how many greats but um and they're still in perfect shape okay they knew how to preserve i love yeah. that yeah i actually have them on the shelf behind me here to digitize yes. one of my many projects that is forever adding to the list <laughs> i feel you you know i feel like our generation it's our job to preserve those memories and I think about that all the time, actually, like family archival. It's it's such a project, but it's so yeah. important. Yeah, it really is. This is feeling moody. I'm loving this. What do we think so far, Chad? Do we have any questions for me? Are we um, learning something new? <laughs> yeah, I think people are enjoying it. I don't see any questions right now, but uh, if you feel like you're at a good point with this, it is time for the artist spotlight. Um, Amazing. So we could hop over to that whenever you're ready. Let's do it. So today we are spotlighting Tiffany Alanuri. She is an incredible women's photographer in Los Angeles, California. I don't know anyone who works harder than Tiffany. Like truly, she's just constantly creating beautiful, beautiful work. Wow. And she also sells presets, by the way. Really incredible preset artist. Like I have to snag some soon because they're just stunning. And the way that she color grades is beautiful. This is actually a photo of her. Sorry, folks, I can't actually click in there. I'm not logged in, but I do recommend that all of you go follow her, check out her work. She is a huge Lightroom user and you can see here in her bio that you can actually click in and check out her presets. And mm. I very much recommend doing so. In the page, you can actually see some of the before and afters here as well. Oh, and wow. how warm and cohesive they all look. It's really cool. Yeah, they look so good. Her work is really gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Let's check out. See here, she has some of those presets available for you. They're very affordable. $14.99. All that. Not bad at all. She's amazing. So definitely go check her out. Yeah, I love her work. Stunning. I love her branding too. She actually just branded um, a project for her mom. Her mom created a um, sustainable skincare line called Cleansy, I believe it is. Mm. Um, I'll have to find it somewhere for you guys. 
but I think it's like K-L-E-N-Z-Y. Maybe let's see in the search bar. Cleansy skin. Okay, maybe not, but I, I think it's along those lines. So highly recommend checking her out and her work. Yeah. Can we go back to her page real quick? Oh, yeah, of course. Just want to see. I know you're not logged in, so we can't scroll too far, but just to show everyone some of her other work. Check it out. Yeah. She's and incredible. And very similar to kind of the styles in the way that you've been editing the past two days. So yes. I love that. Yeah. If there's anyone who is into um like portrait photography def oh my goodness i cannot <laughs> <laughs> type right now fun fact i'm actually using a french keyboard at this moment and the letters are positioned differently yeah props to you for being <laughs> able to do that throughout this stream it's crazy it's so funny just check out okay i keep trying to click on things but <laughs> look how stunning just the Absolutely softness beautiful 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 yeah yeah well thank you so much for sharing that and um don't forget everyone you can submit yourself or a friend um to the artist spotlight and be featured here on a on adobe live and so just click on the artist spotlight tab next to the chat and uh and fill out the form check it out get featured yeah. we're gonna keep spotlighting people this whole stream is like low-key been a spotlight for a community but that's been really fun um i also just want to shout out everybody who submitted a photo i have a little list here nachi christopher alec james camilla louis jada nadira benjamin sophia mohammed and skylar thank you for submitting your photos for me to edit on live this has been so much fun and we're going to keep going for a little while longer so yeah to stay with us please and i would love to see your photos at the end if you have been following along and editing feel free to at me on Instagram or post them to your story, tag me. I think yesterday I, I said I would come up with a hashtag and I never did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we were supposed to do that. How about Amina Adobe Live? That's perfect. Yes. All right. You can hashtag, hashtag Adobe Amina or Amina Adobe Live. And, uh, and you can share anything that you've made either during the stream or after or whenever. We'll keep it going from here until forever. Until forever. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All righty. So we've got a travel photo here, it looks like. And this one looks really fun. I'm excited for this because the sky is very well balanced. It's not blown out. And yeah, everything's pretty even in the photo. It looks like there's some fun colors to bring out as well. So let's check that out. Hmm, let's start up here in the basic module for the adjustments. And yeah, I just want to see what I'm working with. So I'm just going to bring up the exposure a bit. Okay, we don't want it that bright. We're bringing down the highlights, the white. And already that's feeling a little bit more even. It was already pretty even before, but alas, we are creating more, more visibility in all of the details. Nice. So we're going to scroll down to the hue and we're going to give it a little bit more of a surrealistic treatment here. So let's see. Hmm, what do we want to switch up? I think the greens can be a little bit more yellow, yeah. And the yellows can be just really yellow. That already looks like more vibrant. And then we've got these oranges here, which are pretty cool already, but for the sake of uh, color theory, we're going to make it a bit more orange. So that was the original. This is a little bit more peach and I enjoy that. 
Yeah. The yellow is nice too, actually. Now it's like analogous colors and analogous colors are friends on the color wheel. So it's like any colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Uh, we're scrolling down to our calibration module here, just further pushing to see what we can work with here. Already it's, it's natural, but it's like different. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so nice. That's really fun. And so in this like color grading module, this is where the fun happens because this is where you get to really explore all of those different feelings, that cinematic like energy that we want to bring out of this moment. Again, thinking about the context of like a music release. Like if I saw this online and there was maybe text somewhere that said a date, like a release date, or even just like a really stylized font that was maybe somewhere in the middle of the sky, I would feel really drawn into this image. And you could even go back and animate it later or something like that. You can make the sky move, you can make the grass like wave or waver there's a lot you could do here it feels very like i want to go into follow that pathway and see what i discover could be tropical yeah. it's giving me like fkj energy <coughs> if you're familiar with fkj what is fkj fkj is a producer and music artist he creates these very like lush soundscapes and very Ooh. cinematic music and um, his music videos and like short films or documentaries always have like natural elements in them as well um, mm. I would imagine like if this were a set of one of his music videos he would just set up his piano and his um, MIDI keyboards and everything just like right smack dab in the middle there and it would just look so cinematic I can already see it in my head Oh, so, I love that. That sounds super cool. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, definitely one of those artists I listen to while I edit and want to be like taken into a different world. Mm. So we're just boosting some of the luminance here. Because now I want to bring down the exposure once more. That's really pretty so far. I keep trying to go more surrealistic, but I just keep going a little bit more realism today, which I'm into. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keeping it pretty much in the middle feels good. And then if we did want to make it surrealistic, I might change the sky to like pink or something. So let's go ahead and use that select sky feature here. Yeah. And we can go back to this color tool and just see what colors we can get. I'm just scrolling the top just to see what happens. If I left it somewhat purple there, I might want to like bring down the exposure and maybe add more of a purple tint, maybe add some yellow there. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, maybe highlights. I really like the sky, but now the rest of the image doesn't really fit. And so I'm going to try doing the same thing, selecting the sky, but doing an inverse selection. Mm. So I'm going to select sky. And where is that invert tool? Right at the top here. So now it's selected the reverse of the image and I can actually work with everything but the sky, which is fun. And so I'm going to create that pink tint, create a little bit more warmth. Mm, not really loving that, which is okay. I can continue to experiment. All of a sudden it's feeling a little bit apocalyptic in there. 
as the sirens ring downtown LA. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they knew. <laughs> Yeah, that's super cool, though. Like, totally a different vibe from the tropical look that you were starting to go with before. Yeah, this just shows you how many different ways you can transform an image in Lightroom. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Let's see. Adding another tint to my selected area. I do kind of want to create, like, a uniform look as if you were actually there. And so if the sky was reflecting off of these buildings and the ground, it might have a red tint like this because the sky has a red tint. And I can also adjust the hue up here for the selected area. Whoa. This is where we get trippy. Mm, so awesome though. Oh, I wish I knew how to make GIFs like this. Oh. If I was just like, you toggling something and allowing it to change that would be cool i wonder if you i guess you could either do a still image at every point on the color spectrum and then put it all together in photoshop or you could do like a screen recording of you dragging the slider that's actually a brilliant idea <laughs> i'm gonna try that later <laughs> yes that would be really awesome we took this way further than I expected to take it, but th that's really cool. I love how that's turning out. Now I want to go back into the sky and make it feel a little bit more in alignment with the ground. So let's let's experiment with this now. It's feeling surrealistic in a fun way. It's like these turquoise skies or more orange, red. I kind of like the red. Ooh, green sky. Mm. Very trippy. Okay, I'm going to stick with purple. And then I'm going to exit out of the masks for now because <laughs> I have brought us to an interesting point. And now I'm super curious to see what any of these presets on top of this edit would look like now that everything is masked up. It kind of switches up how it would be affected. So. Let's experiment. This is like how my brain works. I just kind of flow into things until I like it. But also there's like, I like everything. So again, it's difficult to choose because there's so many different moods that we could bring out. Yeah, I, I totally feel you with that. So hard to decide. It's like, makes me think of, it's like a strawberry now or something. Yeah, I love like a strawberry sky. Wow. It is so meditative to just experience this moment in so many different ways. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that one's really calm. I like that a lot. Wow. It's insane to me that iPhone photos, they don't have the same um, metadata that DS DSLR photos have when they are raw. And it's just incredible that you can also transform these images, even though they don't have that like raw capability. Right. I know it's really, really cool. And I'm so glad that we're able to do that. Me too. It's really such a blessing, especially as an artist who literally lives and breathes visual imagery. Like this is my form of communication and expression. And so to have the tools that help empower me to be creative and explore and try things out and see the world in new ways is very satisfying. Definitely. Yeah. Fulfilling is a better word. That feels like a good place to stop on this image. Let's take a look at the before and after. Wow.
There you have it, folks. Mm, amazing. You can, you can create new worlds to exist in. If yeah. I could jump into this photo, I would. <laughs> I know. Look at the difference there. It's like all of a sudden now there's a whole mood to it and the sky looks like it was at sunset and you can kind of feel the thickness in the air and it has like, I don't know, I keep hearing strawberry. <laughs> It I feels, think it's like strawberry mm -hmm. fields or something. <laughs> mm, oh, strawberry fields. Yes. I has anyone in the chat seen across the universe. It's one of my favorite films. Mm. It's an ode to the Beatles and there's some really beautiful imagery in there. It also very much visually inspires me. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend checking it out. So, so good. I should put that on. I haven't seen it in so long. And I, I'm pretty sure the last time I saw it, I wasn't doing the art that I do now. And I think it would be very inspiring. I think so too. I feel like that is very much up your alley yeah. within your realm. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see now that I have this edit here, I want to sync it with some of these other photos that are in different environments and see how it affects it. So let's go ahead and do that. That's an interesting one. Mm, wow. Cool. That and this look like two sides of the same coin or like they're from the same realm, you know? And that's yeah. what's really cool about um, these kinds of edits. Like if I wanted to, I could go ahead and create a preset and apply it to different situations. And that is a really fun way to continue iterating upon your creative process and that way you don't have to try to achieve the same thing over and over again I think I do know how to create a preset let's see if I can do that just to show you hmm. do I remember um to create I a preset mm-hmm mm -hmm. uh, so scroll up to the top up and here. then click the mm -hmm. uh no right down where next to presets click the plus icon ah create preset it's that easy yeah. guys what would i call this preset i would call it i'm gonna call it strawberry fields since that's what you were feeling yes Oop. it's the french keyboard again And it looks like it has all of these attributes except for the grain and the post crop vignetting. So I'm just checking that I want all of that there and I do, so create. Yeah, and now it's showing me my user presets, strawberry fields. I believe I can also export it somehow and share it with you so I can export I can probably save it to a certain folder maybe I'll make this available for you guys as a freebie since you were here if you dm me on instagram I will send you this preset for free that would be awesome thank you for doing that yeah my instagram is amina yasmin a-m-i-n-a-y-a-s-m-i-n with an underscore at the end. So hit me up if you want it. Yeah, and Sam has actually linked that in the chat. Thank you, Sam. So um, be sure to check out Amina on Instagram and get that free preset. Thank you, Sam. Amazing. So for the last few minutes of this stream, let's go ahead and adjust the sky here. Let's select the sky once more. Nice job. And I actually love how that looks with the pink sky like that even though it's just the layer mask it's giving me the idea to make the sky pink purple too purple okay that's nice i went all the way to the top corner for red and i really just like that as is that's gorgeous let's zoom on in i like the green like overglow 
it looks like it might even be like a radioactive sky situation mm. it's like utopic yes. but also kind of insidious <laughs> it gives me like uh endless summer poster vibes yes if i were to crop this to make it cover art it would be like this very simple yeah would you listen to this song i would definitely definitely i sure would well this has been awesome thank you so much for everything that you taught us today and for all of your incredible editing techniques and thank you everyone for joining us and be sure to stick around for the illustrator creative challenge with jack watson immediately followed by day two of pattern design with sin lagos thank you everyone for being here thank you amina this was wonderful and i will see you all next time bye everyone bye Thank you.